Hello, and welcome to episode three of Gemo Memo. Today, we're going to be talking about black currant gemotherapy extract. Black currant is a very exciting extract to learn about. It happens to be the most widely used gemotherapy extract all across Europe. And I think after you hear about our views on black currant, you're going to understand why that's true. I'm Lauren Hubele. I am a gemotherapy expert, I'm a health coach, and I'm here today with herbalist Terry Brooks and with acupuncturist Megan Lim, each bringing our wisdom into looking at individual gemotherapy extracts. So Terry, I'm really curious about this black currant as a shrub. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, black currant again is a member of the genus Ribes, neg oh, Ribes, the species being negrum. And there are other species. Of course, there's the red currant and there's a white currant also. We're talking about the black currant. Um, it is, as you've mentioned, it's a shrub. It's native to temperate and central northern Europe. So any of the European countries, many of them, even Eastern Europe, have this shrub growing indigenously. It prefers a damp, fertile soil. It loves morning sun, but a little bit of shade in the afternoon or some kind of dappled sunshade throughout the day. It's a very hardy plant. It can live in areas that are minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's a form of a woody shrub and it grows about four to six feet tall at its best, in its best situation. In the spring, it has very sweetly scented flowers that are pinkish white. And as I learned that they are used in um, not only aromatherapy, aromatherapy, but perfumery trade. Terry, are there any particular historical uses or folklore that you could share with us about black currant? What I found very interesting is that in Russia and probably other Eastern European areas, they've used um, just twigs and branches. It doesn't even have to be taken from the live tree, things that have broken off and fallen in a tea that they've made and that this tea made from this, these twigs from black currant are thought to be used in cases where you might think of requiring prednisone. So a steroidal kind of compound in this plant, obviously using it to treat inflammation of all kinds. I, I just get this really homey picture of that Russian grandma, like the nesting dolls, uh -huh. <laughs> putting their little twigs in a cup of water, you know. Um, in Britain, they also sell this juice, the berry, commercially because it's so high in vitamin C, antioxidants, and particularly anthocyanins from the dark purple color. So, Terry, given your background as an herbalist, do you, do you see anything that links the plant itself and its growth to the potential of the extract? This plant, all parts of the plant have been used. I, I'm not sure about the roots, but the leaves, berries, um, twigs, obviously, have all been used, flowers also. So throughout history, they've discovered, again, about the high vitamin C, the antioxidants. It happens to be a really good source of gamma linoleic acid, which is an essential fatty acid, and also potassium. So, um, you can go into the store and buy evening primrose seed capsules and so on. Black currant is equally high in that it has about 12 or 15 to 18 percent of GLA in its plant. This is, um, I would say, brain function, skin integrity, reproductive health, skeletal health, metabolism, hair condition. Um, especially really great treating skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, any kind of disturbance in the mantle of your skin are benefited by GLA from black currant. Interesting. Thanks, Terry. So, so when that, that, ex, that bud from the black currant shrub is put into the extract, we start to see its potential. And there are some primary actions from that we will see with black currant. And that, that foremost primary action is the resolution of inflammation. Whether that inflammation is caused by acute illness, whether it's allergies or injuries, 
it's a very similar action to cortisol. So this is true. It's a powerful, powerful antioxidant. Very um, effective at clearing away free radicals and promoting the regeneration of tissue. Black currant is excellent at lowering the histamines in the body, whether that response is from food or a substance. And it stimulates the adrenals and the production of adrenaline and dopamine. So those are the primary actions of this extract. But it has a secondary action. And that secondary action is as a tonic for the sympathetic nervous system, making each of the actions of the sympathetic nervous system more effective. So when we look at black current, we know it has so much potential. How might we actually put it to use? Well, acutely, it's found in nearly every acute protocol. And if I was traveling, uh, which I do often, I never leave the house without a bottle of black currant. If I leave everything else at home, black currant goes with me because of its effectiveness to quickly resolve inflammation um, and its ability then to improve the action of anything else you partner it with. As far as using black currant in protocols when we're working with someone on a chronic level, whether we're optimizing their elimination or we're working on more degenerative um, issues, black currant supports the adrenals because we need that support when this important healing action is going on. It helps the overall goal of optimizing elimination. And what's really magical, I think about black currant is it improves the effectiveness of everything that's paired with. So I can easily see why this is the most popular extract in Europe. It has um, a lot of potential just in that one little bottle. Now, Megan, I can't wait to hear what you have to share. I'm sure it's interesting from the Asian medicine lens. Yes, black currant is also one of my favorite extracts, and it is indispensable in so many cases. Black currant is a kidney and triple energizer supporter. So uh, as a kidney support, we know that it's a kidney support because the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are associated with the energy of kidney in East Asian medicine. And we know the adrenals sit right on top of the kidneys. And from a chi perspective, the adrenals are also part of our kidney energy. And kidney is our most ancestral energy. It, controls our development, it controls our growth through childhood, our ability to reproduce, and then it starts to decline as we age. But one of the things that kidney is, is it acts as a savings account for our energy. So when something is depleted, kidney will kick in just like the adrenals will and give us that added oomph. And the sympathetic nervous system also is a young tonic, which means it's the active oomph part of our energy. And so it's great as a partner extract because it gives its partner the extra little energizer needed to do what it does. But I think the primary action in an East Asian medical lens of black currants is as a chi and blood mover. And how does it move chi and blood? It moves chi and blood through its relationship with the triple heater or the triple energizer energy. And triple energizer or triple heater is not a physical organ in the body, but it is one of the 12 main meridians in Asian medicine. Instead of being an actual organ, it, oh, it's a physical system, an energetic system that oversees the functioning of all the other organs. So you can see why it's so widely applicable. Uh, it is, a triple heater is the meridian in charge of regulating the chi and fluid movement in the whole system. So the nature of stagnation, pain, and inflammation from an East Asian medical lens is there's a block in the flow of chi. And if triple energizer is balanced, it keeps the chi and the fluids moving smoothly. So if there is already inflammation, it resolves it. And 
it prohibits inflammation also. And it doesn't matter where that inflammation is, which is why this is the first one we reach for and why it's so applicable. It moistens the internal organs. It moistens the skin. This can be um, the fluids in the upper respiratory tract, speaking to allergies or upper respiratory infections. This can speak to the fluids surrounding the muscles and the nerves, the interstitial fluid in the connective tissues. Um, it moves the lymph system. And then think of the fluid in the pathways and cellular metabolism. Triple heater helps to remove waste from the body. So it really is the perfect partner extract as we're cleaning. Wow, wow. I've always wanted to understand triple burner and now I've got it. Thank you, <laughs> Megan. Great, great. Ladies, this was wonderful. Um, in closing, I'm sure you're intrigued by all of our backgrounds and you'll want to learn more. So if it's gemotherapy and um, extracts and classes you have in mind, please take a look at my website, laurenhubelay.com. And Terry, you've got some recommendations for people wanting to learn more about trees? There's so many people out there writing about trees right now. And I, at my fingertips, I do not have this author's name, but um, he is writing about how trees support each other, how trees offer their immunity to others, to other trees and so on. So I will get that before we meet again. But in the meantime, you might check out a book called The Global Forest by Diana Beresford Kroger. Yeah. And still interested in these. <laughs> I have the, the tree medicine, tree magic, the meaning of trees, and the wisdom of trees, all contributing to my knowledge. Beautiful. Thanks, Terry. And Megan? Yes, you can tell me or find out more information at my website, www.aculemp.com. It's A C U. L E M P dot com. Megan and Terry, it was really fun geeking out with you on Blackbird, right? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining me and, and honoring me with your presence today. And if you want to learn more about um, chemotherapy extracts, you'll take a look at our future recordings. Thank you. Thank you.